Hello, this is Colin Balchin of Adept Knowledge Management from Aberdeen. I'm going to talk to you today about a technique called float trend analysis. Why is it popular? Well, it's not. It was invented 40 years ago. It's brilliant, but it's never caught on really like some of the techniques in planning and monitoring and control. However, it should be used as a technique in a manner that's complementary to earned value analysis and to risk analysis. It has an undeniable truth about it. If you're faring badly on the project, it tells you exactly where you are, where you're tending to go, and it's unrelenting in its forecasting ability. What I'm going to do is draw up a couple of diagrams to explain it, and I'll explain the method behind it, because this little video is a precursor to uh, showing you in another video um, a really neat add-in to Microsoft Project which will allow you to do just this. I've been using this technique for about 35 years. The technique came out in 1969. It was developed by a guy called Kilpatrick in Edinburgh in 1969 and wrote the paper on it. Okay, so we start, and I'm gonna move across and do the diagram for you. We start with a fairly simple diagram which shows the duration of the project along a timeline like this. So there's our time and uh, we're going to have up here an axis which allows us to look at a float and we simply say for float okay where's the maximum float of the project well that happens right at the beginning of the project when we analyze it before we start to make any progress on it and where's the minimum float well the float is zero when the project is complete so that's the project duration there Okay, I'll just put the usual PD in for that. There must be a maximum float on the project. Let's put that up there and just call it float max. And we assume, as did Kilpatrick, that the float, it's out of limit, the max, the maximum float will just decay in a linear fashion from the beginning of the project right to the end. Let's see if I can intersect that one there. Yep, not a bad effort. So that's the project. Boundaries of float. Up here, positive, we're assuming the project is going to be in positive float, where there is float right the way throughout. What he envisaged was that if we could track the float on every path, then it was essentially run down from whatever it was, let's say somewhere less than the maximum. Let's consider a couple there and that the float would come down more or less like this, radially to that point, and all finish down here. So we'd have another one doing this. And these are the bands of float, if you like, the near maximums, and perhaps we could envisage something like the near critical, because the critical path with zero float would just trot along this line here. So something near the critical float, critical path, that you would be very interested in monitoring, good practices to monitor anything within, say, perhaps 10 or 15% of the maximum float at the critical path. So we would expect this to decay and land at that point there. That's the theoretical position. 